When I think about the show Doug, there are many things that come to mind. Adolescence, life lessons, and pork chop, to name a few. But one thing that doesn't come to mind, if I'm being honest, is controversy. Don't get me wrong, this show tackled many serious topics like bullying, peer pressure, and navigating relationships or friendships. However, the show seemed to do so in a way that was very conscientious. It wasn't all too often that the show would go in a super morbid direction, but by all means, it would stay real for the most part. I mean, after all, the show's entire premise is rooted in reality, with it focusing around a normal kid just trying to figure out life and where he belongs in the grand scheme of things. With that territory though, came times when the show would tackle topics that many other shows wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. With that in mind though, the creative team behind Doug had a really great track record for tackling these shows in a way that is mindful of who their intended audience is. At its heart, this is a kids show. They need to make sure that the stories being told were done so in a way that would have young kids learning a positive lesson by the end of the story. As a result, they kept it relatively clean and child friendly, choosing to tackle topics that kids might come across in everyday life such as rumors, overcoming insecurities, and jealousy. All topics that would be relatively serious but nothing too intense. However, there is one specific episode that boldly covered a topic that not very many other cartoons would dare even speak of. It would be an episode so serious that it would actually end up being censored in its syndication in the years following its first airing. It's a topic that looking back, I'm incredibly surprised that they even went near. And that's why today, on our nostalgic walk down memory lane, we're looking at the episode of Doug that tackled a very controversial topic. First things first though, I just have to point out that this episode is from Disney's Doug, not the original Doug from Nickelodeon. So with that being said, grr. If I'm being honest, I'm really not a big fan of Disney's Doug. In my opinion, the show lost a lot of its great qualities when it left Nickelodeon. On top of that, the characters' voices in the Disney version just drive me up a wall. For the sake of giving this episode a fair analysis though, I'm gonna forget about all that because at the end of the day, this video just isn't about how much I disdain what Disney did to Doug. And with that being said, we're looking at the Season 2 episode called Doug's Chubby Buddy. That's me! This episode starts out with Doug and Skeeter hanging out on the porch while Skeeter is reading a tabloid magazine, hoping to find some information on a cryptid that he's been on the hunt for. When the magazine comes up empty on info, Skeeter starts talking about a popular actress, Briar Langolier, who's in the magazine. Just at the mention of her name, he gets the attention of Al and Moo, who were nearby studying the periodic table together. They rush over and try to fight the magazine away from Skeeter, hoping to get a look at her. Just then, Patty rides up on her bike, asking if the boys want to hang out. BB won't do anything while Teen Heart Street's on. It's like she thinks everything stops at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock? Uh-oh. Don't tell me you guys watch that junk. <laughs> yes. Oh, will you look at the time? Hurry. Patty vents to Doug about how she can't believe that all of these people are such huge fans of this dumb popularity contest of a TV show but she quickly learns that even Doug of all people is obsessed with the show. We see Doug and his friends all huddled around the TV watching this show, which is currently in an arc surrounding a school election. Is it true, Briar, that if elected, you'd put the body back in student body president? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make people happy! So what makes you think you could possibly win, Trudy? Boo! 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 Go back to Briar! Well, I have all four years' experience in the student council, and I'm a member of the National Junior Merit Scholarship Fund for the Gifted. Sure, sure. And I can see you're handy with a knife and fork, too. As the episode ends with Briar winning the election, we cut over to BB and Connie watching the show with Patty, who just looks so bored. BB complains about how Patty just wanted to talk through the whole show, but then all three girls are captivated by an infomercial on TV. Fat protects organs from injury. 
Mm -hmm. Keeps you warm. But to most of us, it's just ugly old fat. <gasps> Hi, I'm Lardy the Fat Cell. I've been inside you for years, just waiting to push my way out. This anthropomorphic lump of fat goes on to explain how the human body gains fat in infancy and then again at a specific age, which makes the three girls worry that the commercial is talking about them. Connie and BB begin to panic about them getting fat just by sitting there watching TV. Just then, Blair, the star of the show that they were just watching, chimes in, as even she is a part of this infomercial. It's a sad fact of life that none of you will ever have a 9-inch waist, but now you can try using my Waste Away Diet Kit. Remember, your friends will never tell you when you're fat. Oh my gosh, can you believe how fat she is? See, it's just some dumb product they're selling. They have to make you think you're fat. You are so not living in this world, Patty Mayonnaise. If you don't watch it, one day you will look in the mirror and instead of Patty, you'll say Fatty. We cut on over to the lunchroom at school the next day where Doug and Skeeter are talking with Connie and Roger about last night's episode. The best part was when Briar dumped the school constitution and declared herself head cheerleader and beneficent dictator. Now that's a woman. Skeeter is reading another tabloid magazine, and when he sees an article about how Bigfoot sends Briar fan mail every week, he gets the idea to catch the cryptid that he's after by using a woman monster to lure it in. However, they're both stumped as to where they're going to find a woman monster to begin with. Meanwhile, Patty is in the lunch line choosing what to eat. Just then, Guy walks up and pretty much accuses her of getting a salad because she's trying to lose weight. I didn't pick a salad because I'm on a diet, Guy. Oh, I'm with you all the way, Patty. Trim down, firm up, break it! <gasps> In a very vulnerable and self-conscious state, Patty walks up to Doug and Skeeter, hoping for a bit of comfort from them. However, they are none too helpful. Doug? Do you think I need to lose weight? Oh yeah, you're huge. <laughs> Later on, we see Patty at track tryouts as her and a group of other girls are getting yelled at by the coach about how he expects them to be a lean, mean team. With that, Patty ends up being distracted by Baby's earlier words echoing in her mind, and as a result, she misses the start signal by a few seconds. In Patty's mind, she's failing and everyone is talking bad about her. However, in real life, she finishes not too far behind her competition. The coach tells her that she just barely qualified for the next round. Patty walks right up to Connie and BB, and she tells them that she needs to go on a diet right away. The other girls say the same for themselves, and the three make a pact to never be heavy again. I hereby declare this lunch meeting free of fat. Royal chicken, carrot, bottle of water. I bought the Waste Away Diet Kit. That Briar Langolier thing? Well, she's a lame actress, but she is in good shape. Wow, this sandwich is a tad weighty. BB explains that her dad bought her a computerized calorie analyzer that she just puts her lunch in. However, when she has it analyze an entire lobster, shrimp cocktail, and fruit platter complete with a cake for dessert, it tells her that this is only 10% of her daily calorie goal. Meanwhile, over at the library, Doug and Skeeter are still on their pursuit to find a woman monster. They've read through every book they could find, and due to Doug's splitting hairs as to what they would define as a monster, they come up empty-handed, which leads to them deciding to take an existing monster and create their own woman version of that monster. While that's going on, BB stuffs an entire submarine sandwich and a bag of chips in her calorie counter, and it tells her that it's only 8% of her daily calorie intake. Meanwhile, Patty gets the workout of a lifetime in. She goes on a 30 minute long run and does about 300 sit-ups. 
As time passes, we see Patty's meals get smaller and smaller, while her exercises get more and more extreme. Despite the sudden whiplash of a diet change combined with being worked really hard, Patty is still able to beat her fastest lap time and completely smokes the rest of her competition. She ends up reflecting on her progress with her calorie goal sheet on her wall, saying that this diet is the best thing that she's ever done. We see Patty daydreaming that she's at a massive track event running what they call the 400 calorie dash. While that happens, the character from the infomercial appears and lets free some globs of fat on the field. There's two unannounced globs of fat on the field! Yes! you with this gold-plated sandwich, a happy reminder of when you used to eat. Later on, we see Doug and Skeeter in the middle of constructing their woman monster. As they work, Patty approaches in the middle of a run. She says hi to them, and they show her their monster. Well, that's one scary pile of junk. It's our monster. Oh, well, I gotta go. Today's our weigh-in. I think I lost three pounds. That's great. Well, see ya. She is way too wide, man. Oh, here's the problem, man. Later on at BB's house, we see her, Connie, and Patty all taking turns stepping on the scale. Connie is pleased with having lost just one pound. However, BB boasts saying that she's definitely lost a lot more than that. However, she's completely shocked when she steps up on the scale and finds out that she's actually gained 7 pounds since starting. Understandably upset, she walks up to her calorie analyzer only to find out that she has it set up incorrectly, identifying her as a 6 foot 2 man whose goal weight is 250 pounds. Patty then steps on the scale and finds out that she's lost a whopping 3 pounds over just the last few days. Connie is happy for her and congratulates her, but Patty says that it's a start as she leaves yet again for another run. As time passes, we see Patty's body start to decay and show signs of malnourishment as she wakes up in the morning completely exhausted with bags under her eyes and she struggles to run like she did before. She struggles to even stay awake in class as her stomach is growling. On top of that, we see her starting to make mistakes as she completely forgets to pick up her buddy for Big Buddy Beatball. On top of that, her attitude starts to change very drastically. This is not like you. Oh, come on, Connie. Don't tell me you're jealous because I lost more weight than you. Oh, Patty! Later on, we see Patty continuing to run as she runs past Doug's house yet again. He asks her if maybe she's taking this whole losing weight thing a little bit too far, but she dismisses him, saying that she still has another 300 calories to burn. Doug tries to tell her that she looks really tired, but she just runs off without paying him any mind. Just then, Roger approaches Doug and Skeeter, asking what they're doing with all of this junk. Doug explains their plan to capture a cryptid, and Roger, who for some reason is rich in the Disney version of Doug, ends up getting in cahoots with them, offering to invest in their project. After that, we cut to the next day at lunchtime. Hey Patty, can I sit with you? Sure, Doug. Mm. Boy, I'm stuffed! Lunch, five calories, zero fat. Patty? Are you sure eating spray for lunch is a good idea? Yeah, you're right, Doug. Maybe tomorrow I should just skip lunch. Thanks for the advice! See ya! After school, Doug goes to Skeeter, who's in the middle of working on the monster with Roger's assistance. Doug tells Skeeter that he needs to skip monster work today because he really wants to go to the track so that he can check on Patty. Meanwhile, Roger is in talks with the contractor that he's paying to make the monster. He makes the executive decision to get rid of Skeeter's blueprints, and instead decides to direct the project himself. Over at the track, we see Doug talking to Patty's track coach. I'm kind of worried about Patty. She's been on this diet. Let me tell you something funny. All athletes diet. You don't understand this because you are not an athlete. Hand me that fruit pie. Don't you think she's getting carried away? If every athlete got more carried away, we'd have more trophies. Get carried away. 
It could be our team motto! Doug leaves, having been unsuccessful to talk some sense into the coach. As quickly as he can walk away, Patty approaches, just furious and screaming at Doug for going to her coach behind her back. How dare you go to Coach Smith behind my back! I wasn't Patty, I, I was just- Doug, you have no right to butt in! Tomorrow's the finals and I have to be my best! <laughs> Ow! You get me so mad, you make me dizzy! After that, we see Roger posing in front of his monster for a camera. Skeeter approaches and confronts him about the sign, saying that this was his and Doug's idea, and Roger comes clean about the fact that he basically hijacked the idea from them to leave them in the dust. He says that he even talked to his lawyer and got confirmation that because he financed the whole thing, he has sole legal rights to it. In the process of explaining that though, he accidentally detaches the monster from the truck that's hauling it, and it goes rolling down a hill completely out of sight. Back at the track though, we see the coach announcing the final round of tryouts. No thanks, I'd only retain it. She is so disciplined. Uh, Doug, I'm sorry. Uh, I have to warm up. The coach calls Patty over to compete in the long jump, and she gets into position, not looking very good. She ends up hallucinating a bit before making her go, and as soon as she finishes her jump, she falls completely unconscious. A short while later, she comes back too, as the coach tells her that she's just in time for the next race. I don't feel so good, coach. Just get carried away, mayonnaise! Carry yourself away, coach. This girl isn't running anymore today. Did you eat anything today, Patty? No, I thought I'd run faster that way. This volunteer explains to Patty that when you starve yourself, your body starts to break down muscle tissue and organs for energy. She tells Patty that her body is eating itself because she isn't feeding it. As Patty finally starts giving her body some sustenance, we cut back to across town where Roger's monster is on the loose. I'm strangely repulsed and yet attracted. Keep Back at the track meet, Doug apologizes to Patty for not being there when she wanted to talk originally because he was so wrapped up in their monster project. Patty accepts his apology, saying that she knows what it's like to get carried away. Just then, the two of them are surprised to see Roger's monster barreling down the road. Which way she go, Doug? <laughs> Later on, we see Doug and Patty sitting together at Mr. Frosty as they look at the menu. Doug asks if she wants to split a small pizza with him, but she turns him down, saying that she's going to order a whole small pizza for herself. While that's going down, one booth over, Skeeter and Roger are fighting over the trophy for the scary junk contest that they won with their monster. Hey, it was our design! Yeah, but it was my money! Wake up and smell the green, buddy! Green? Your green is nothing compared with my gray! Gray? What country are you from? Gray! Gray matter! My brain! Idea! Now, fresh off the heels of that episode, I definitely want to say that this one was a really different episode from the entire rest of the series. Like I said before, this show covered a lot of more serious topics, but this episode by far tackled the most serious topic that they would ever touch. First things first though, I want to address how they ended up censoring this episode. In the original broadcast of this one, the final sequence didn't just end with Skeeter and Roger arguing. There's a part that they edited out that would feature Patty giving information about resources for mental health as well as eating disorders. I was actually able to find it online, but fair warning, it's in absolute potato. Yeah, but it was my money! Wake up and smell the green, buddy! Green? Your green is There's free information available about eating disorders. You can call Girl Power at 1-800-729-6686 or visit the EVAP website. Caregivers can call the National Institutes of Mental Health at 1-800-647-2642. To me, I feel mixed about this getting censored out. 
I mean, I totally understand where it's coming from. I imagine after this aired, the network could have possibly gotten complaints from parents whose kids saw this and then asked questions that they were uncomfortable with answering and having a healthy conversation about. Though I'm not sure if that was actually the case, I can't really imagine why else they would have cut out that last part and not anything else. I mean, in my opinion, those resources are definitely worth having there. What if this episode was seen by someone who struggled with an issue like that and maybe it spoke to them? That could potentially be an avenue that they could have pursued to get help. Furthermore, it's like, what benefit do they get from taking just that part out? And also, what harm does having that at the end of the episode do? I mean, certainly not any more harm than the actual contents of the episode itself did. There's a lot here that was just a lot to take in if I'm being honest. I have to point out how predatory it was of this company to run their weight loss infomercial right after this popular show that all of these young and impressionable kids are just obsessed with. The only thing worse than that is the fact that the woman who stars in this show that they all just can't get enough of is the spokesperson of the weight loss system that they're aiming at literal children. That just feels so offensively targeted that it's not even funny. Like, they know they already have all these kids' attention because they pretty much haven't had time to change the channel yet. Then, to pull them in even further, they have their idol on the screen because they know that these kids will watch anything that has Blair in it. Then, to make the kids pay even closer attention to their message, they fearmonger them directly by calling out specific ages of which they claim kids should be worried about getting fat. This, just from top to bottom, is so scummy. On top of that though, I have to point out the irony of this diet plan being called Waste Away when in all reality it literally is going to make you start to waste away. Granted, Patty may have taken it a lot further than the diet plan had recommended, it was still the tipping point that would lead to her literally deteriorating. It was a solid mix of that awful ad for the Waste Away system, but also her so-called friends putting her down. In the beginning, you can tell that Patty sees right through the ruse that they're trying to put up. She even points out that this ad is trying to convince people of thinking that they're fat. However, when BB makes that comment about how one day she's going to look in the mirror and instead of Patty, she's going to see Fatty, it ends up sticking with Patty and making her get in her own head. This would be the thing that made her doubt herself more than anything. It wasn't until she was at the starting line and she heard those words echo in her head that she started to doubt herself. These words would be the real push that led to her falling down a dark rabbit hole and developing an eating disorder. The slope was a very slippery one that quickly led to her going from eating 5 calorie spray for lunch to just not eating lunch at all. She was even refusing water in fear that she would just retain it. Then, of course, things reach their worst part where Patty's neglect towards herself leads to her getting dizzy, hallucinating, and ultimately falling unconscious. This right here was very much so highlighting the danger of obsessively counting your calories and malnourishing yourself in the name of losing weight. In the long run, doing things like that are going to have a lot more negative effects on your body than anything. It's important to eat the diet that works best for your body and that looks different for everyone. Surely though, completely starving yourself is never the answer. It was really sad to see Patty progress the way that she did throughout this episode. Patty is just a normal girl, and it's incredibly sad that she and so many other girls were manipulated by this awful marketing to stress so much about the size of their bodies or the numbers on a scale. Furthermore, of course, having people like the track coach in your life just makes things so much worse. This guy is completely useless. He straight up tells these girls that they need to be fierce and not help any of their teammates if they fall, on top of telling them that they need to be lean and mean. He pushes them and pushes them, meanwhile he's just sitting back and enjoying a nice pie on the field. Then when one of the girls he's supposed to be keeping safe passes out from being malnourished and pushed too hard, he tries to push her to get back up and get in the next race, when clearly she isn't doing too good. 
Not to mention the fact that Doug even tried to talk to this guy about it. He full-blown confided in this man, trying to tell him that he's worried for his friend who's been starving herself and working out like crazy. And in return, the coach just dismisses Doug and turns his fear into their new team slogan, going as far as having it printed on a shirt for himself to wear. Personally, I have a really hard time stomaching when adults, who are supposed to be, I don't know, a positive influence, end up ironically causing more detriment to those they're supposed to be leading than benefit. That just really drives me nuts. Like, dude, you had one job, and it's to keep these kids safe, and you couldn't even do that. Now, if there's anything else I want to touch on in closing, it would be the symbolism of Patty's daydream. This was just bizarre, but it really said a lot if we kind of read into it. We see her running in this track event that's being sponsored by Waste Away. She's competing in the 400 calorie dash and ends up almost being sabotaged by the fat that's chasing her, but she ends up outrunning it. Then, in the very end, we see Blair giving her the trophy and telling her that it's in memory of the days when she used to eat. This, to me, really shows us a lot about Patty and how her brain operates. There's a lot of different ways that you could have interpreted this. For me, personally, I see it as Patty knowing subconsciously that she doesn't need to be doing any of this to win. Keep in mind that this daydream is at a positive point for her. She's feeling accomplished at this point by how much weight she's lost and how good she's doing in track. Then, she has this daydream where the track event is being controlled by the same exact people who brainwashed her and many other girls into thinking that they're overweight. They even sabotage the event by letting fat onto the track and making it chase her. However, instead of doubting herself, losing, and falling like she did in her last daydream, she's able to outrun the fat and win the gold. The sad, bitter ending is her reminiscing on the days when she actually used to eat. I interpreted this as her brain comprehending that she misses eating like normal and that she isn't enjoying what she's doing to her body. Like I said, at this point, she was feeling positive and she believed in herself. I took this daydream as her subconscious telling her that all she has to do is believe in herself and she'll be able to reach her goals. This was, in my opinion, her inner voice telling her that the diet was a bad idea. But what do you guys think? Was your interpretation of this episode and her daydream different from mine? Let me know in the comments down below, I always love seeing your guys' feedback. Massive shout out to my patrons, especially those of you in the true 90s kids tier. You guys make me so incredibly happy and I'm really thankful for our awesome community. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and give some praise to the algorithm in hopes that it pushes this video to everyone else. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.